Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to the another live stream. Today is February 4th, 2024, and we're doing another reading of one of our Eclipse Comics trading card sets that we've bought. For today's stream, we're going to begin the reading for the Iran Contra scandal trading cards. Incredibly, incredibly important event to happen in the United States of America. And these cards came out in 1988. Okay. And I followed the stuff uh, when it was happening when I was in high school. It was televised. The whole uh, uh, hearings and everything was televised. And uh, because I was born in Iran and we had a lot of Iranian uh, family, friends, and uh, and whatnot, and we knew a lot of people knew uh, from Iran. They knew the history and what was going on with the Iran hostage crisis and whatnot. Um, we were privy, or I was privy to a lot of info that many other people were not, and the corporate media was spewing a lot of uh, BS. So it was a very enlightening moment for me. I I found out about the corporate propaganda very early on especially with the iran contra scandal okay and these are the other cards that we've gotten over the last couple of years now and we've already done the reading for the drug war trading cards amazing reading amazing reading and this is the first uh set of trading cards that i bought from eclipse comics and these are all eclipse comics trading cards and we actually found out about these cards uh, from a comic book reading we we're doing from Eclipse Comics. It was a war comic book that we did. Okay, so as soon as we found out about that, I ended up starting to track down some of these cards and we were able to buy uh, uh, some of these cards in bulk and we've given some of these cards away during our yearly auctions. And uh, the playlist for these cards is available on SensorTube and the reading for each card and the full reading is available on all our video sharing platforms as is the reading that we did for the coup d'etat the assassination of john fk trading cards and this was incredibly informative as well brilliant artwork brilliant artwork there was some stuff here that i knew but a lot that i didn't and wow 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 did that go deep did that go deep and for these cars there's two sets available this was the first set that came out or one set available with an update right this was the first set that came out okay and then uh, Oliver Stone put out the JFK movie and after the JFK movie was put out there was a, some information that was re, uh, released that these cards didn't have so they went eclipse comics did an updated version of this car where they made some edits and put some additional information in here and we have that set as well and we did a reading of the cars the comparison between the where they did the updates and stuff so it was pretty cool looking at the information that was being released and if these guys were putting out a card set now there would be a lot more info um, that could be added in there and hopefully one day the CIA files will be released because by now everyone should be aware that the CIA basically had a huge part to play if not orchestrating uh, the assassination of JFK uh, with the mob and some other actors right and we've done the reading for card number 26 for rotten to the core trading cards because it's the rookie card uh, Donald Trump's rookie card right and we've been buying this set investment wise for me anyway uh, a few copies of the set and uh, we've given away a couple of sets of this without the Donald Trump rookie card in our last yearly uh, auction uh, sort of twitch uh, appreciation celebration uh, people watching us on twitch where they rack up points and we looked at the two uh, you know rookie card number two and three for Donald Trump and this one as well and at some point we're going to read all of these cards okay but today Iran Contra and we're gonna begin the reading here there's 36 cards in this as is the norm for all of these cards uh, I believe they all have 36 cards 
So let me put these guys here. And we're going to take a look at these things. We're going to have a reading through this, right? That's our little intro to this. Let me crack this open. And this thing came out. Let's take a look at the box. Okay. Try to get it focused if there's no glare. So Iran Contra trading cards, right? That's Ollie North. Incredible character featuring the secret team, everybody that was involved, right? Writer Paul Brancato, artist Salim Yoquip. And that's the same artist that did the drug war trading cards that we've already read. Additional research, Leonard Refas, editor Kathleen Runwood, Runwood, distributed by Eclipse Enterprises, PO Box 01099, Forestville, California 95436, 795 US 995 Canadian. Let's see what this says. We got to read the fine press. Let's see if we can even focus on this. There we go. Much of the information in these cars was developed by the uh, Christic Institute, a nonprofit public interest law firm, which has filed a lawsuit against key figures in the Iran Contra scandal on behalf of journalist Tony Avergan and Martha Honey. For more information on this lawsuit, contact the Christic Institute, 1324 North Capitol Street, um, Northwest, Washington, D.C., 20002. I wonder if these guys are still around. All right. Interesting. Interesting. And there should be 36 cards here. And there's no insert in this one. I had another pack as well. Um, maybe for the next reading, I'll try to grab the insert from the other pack and uh, we'll have a read through that. Um, sort of gives a little bit of info and stuff on it. Okay. And again, there's 36 cards in this, right? But we're going to start with card number one and go through them. And the art is very unique in this. It's very cartoonish. Um, and considering how important this event was, and you know, same artist as the drug war trading cards. So it's uh, it gives it a very unique feel. It gives it a very unique feel. Let's do this. Let's do this. <clears throat> and the odds are we're going to read the first nine cards uh, in this set. Uh, and because there's 36 cards, we can break that up into four live streams. The previous readings we did, we did 12 readings per set for the previous two live streams. But I think we'll break it down into nine uh, for this one um, and see where we go from there, at least for this this reading okay let's uh, give this a go gang and this set came out in 1988 okay I'm not sure if the date was on there um, I don't remember but it came out in 1988 okay so card number one the Iran Contra hearings And I remember uh, in the previous stream, we talked about who this person was supposed to be. I think it was his lawyer, Ollie's lawyer. Right. Well, let's, let's read. The Joint Senate Hear House Iran Contra Hearings. Okay. Card number one. In the summer of 1987, select committees of the Senate and the House of Representatives held joint public hearings into the Iran-Contra affair in what could fair, uh, fairly be called a damage control operation. 
the committee's focus focused the committee's focused their investigation on whether President Reagan knew that funds generated by the sale of missiles to Iran had been diverted to the Nicaraguan Contra rebels at a time when Congress had forbidden government support for them and the question of where the profits from these sales actually went the important question regarding the US waging a dirty and illegal war against Nicaragua the CIA's conclusion with uh, collusion with known drug traffickers and the involvement of Vice President George Bush and his staff were largely ignored scores of witnesses ranging from spies to ca cabinet officials ga gave rousing pro contra speeches while committee members lobbed softball questions and occasionally gave pro contra um, accolade, uh, accolades accolades of their own the star of the hearings was oliver north a charismatic marine lieutenant col 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 colonel who wore an exp um, expression like a wounded hound and spoke in a voice trembling with patriotism in spite of the inadequacies of the hearings the american public got a glimpse of a secret government a group made up of mostly uh, retired cia and military personnel who carried out foreign policy for the white house with no accountability to congress or the public it is this secret team secret team and its uh its connections to the white house that is the central focus of these cards iran contra scandal trading cards text copyright 1988 paul brent brent art copyright 1988 salim yukup eclipse enterprises p.o box 1099 forestville california 95436 Contra hearings. Interesting. And this is uh, what took place here. Just to give you guys a lowdown with the Iran Contra affair was directly related to the Iranian Revolution in 1978 and the hostage taking that occurred. Okay. Very much so. Very much so. Let me put these guys here so we don't accidentally okay card number two card number two anastasio somaza anastasio somaza Anastasio Somaza. Former Nicaraguan President Anastasio Somaza, card number two. Although he uh, fancied himself a gentlemanly Lat Latin from Manhattan, Nicaraguan President Anastasio Somaza de, ba de Bailey the bail was like his brother and father before him a brutal corrupt dictator by the mid 1970s the somoza family owned one-fourth of nicaragua's farmland controlled most of its industries and had deposed uh, deposited tens of millions of dollars in foreign bank accounts the somoza family had close ties to the US military industrial establishment whose support enabled them to maintain a well equipped national guard most of whose officers samo samo sistas were trained and educated in the united states 
Anastasio Somaza himself was a West Point graduate. By 1978, over 100,000 people had died in Nicaragua Civil War, and evidence of the atrocities committed by Somoza's henchmen had become so overwhelming that the cartel administration, uh, administration cut off military aid and began pressuring Somoza to step down. On July 17, 1979, as San Santanista troops uh, troops were surrounding Managua, Somoza was flown to Homestead Air Force Base in Florida, taking with him his family and closest friends, his most trusted generals and colonels, and most of the money in Nicaragua's national treasury. A year later, Anastasio Somoza was gunned down in his Mercedes Benz on a street in Asocia, Paraguay, where he had been living in exile. His private army, with the CIA's help, lives on. Card number three. Card number three. Enrique Bermundes. Enrique Bermundes. Bermudes. Contra Commander Enrique Bermudes. Card number three. Following the Nicaraguan Revolution, Col Colonel Enrique Bermudez, who has been Anastasio Somoza's military attache in Washington, D.C., relocated to Guatemala via Miami, where he joined forces with Ricardo El Chino Luis, known as Somoza's hatchet man. Louis was a brutal torturer who was later implicated in the murder of El Salvador's Archbishop Romero. Together, Bermudez and Lou formed uh, the September 15th Legion, the nucleus around which other exiled Nicaraguan National Guardsmen began to collect. Sandoval Alo uh, Alorcon godfather of the guatemalan and salvadoran death squads provided safe houses for bermundez and his men and sent many of them with louis to argentina for training when the reagan administration came to power in early 1981 bermudez and the legion moved to tegucigalpa tegucigalpa honduras which was fast becoming the central Contra center of Contra activities. With the help of Argentina, Argen, Argentine and Israeli military advisors, the Contra set up camps along the border and began staging terrorist strikes into Nicaragua. The CIA convinced the leaders of the des, uh, desperate Contra groups to organize a united front under one command, through Bermude, Bermudez, had, though Bermudez had already gained a reputation for corruption, his Washington connection secured his position as military commander of the Nicaraguan Democratic Forces, FDN, which he has held, held despite repeated attempts by other Contra leaders to oust him. Wow, wow, wow. So at the time, he was still there. Enrique, let's take a look at his face. Enrique Bermudez. <clears throat> Card number four. 
four. Card number four. Adolfo. Adolfo Calero. Calero. Adolfo Calero. Cook. Oh, what's this about? Adolfo Calero. Contra leader, Adolfo Calero, a graduate of Notre Dame and Syracuse, Syracuse Universities and a CIA informant since 1963, Adolfo Calero was manager of Coca-Cola's Managua branch at the time of the Nicaraguan Revolution. He remained in Nicaragua and became a vocal critic of the Sandinistas. In 1982, the CIA asked for Calero's help again. He joined the political uh, directorate of the FDN, C card number three, becoming its leader and chief spokesman. The FTN's freedom fighter image was suffering due to his uh, Samosistas Samo heritage, and Calero, who had been part of the middle class opposition to Samosas, in the 1970s restored that image Calero controlled the FDN's bank accounts when Congress cut off military aid to the Contras he began working with Oliver North as the Contras chief fundraiser and he as the chief as the Contras chief fundraiser he often spoke to privileged uh, private groups like NEPL C card number 15 and WACL C card number seven and to representatives of foreign governments such as Taiwan and Chile he met with Enrique Bermudez and other Contra leaders to assess their needs provided this information to North and oversaw the disbursement of money and equipment to the Contras when charges were made that Calero was enriching himself and other Contra leaders through uh, su sweetheart deals North took over the FDN's bank accounts thereafter Colero's two hundred thousand dollars a year salary was paid by Richard Secord and Albert Hakim's uh, operation the enterprise C card number 1920 Colero remain remains the political leader of FDN up to 1988 that is card number four coca-cola 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 now we know Washington Wall Street Card number five, William Casey, Mr. Sunflower, I believe. William Casey, is that it? Is this the face on card? Is it the sunflower from card number one? We see, we see, we see, we see. William Casey. Card number five. Let's focus on this. Little chubby cheeks. William Casey. CIA director. No, no, it's not the it's not the sunflower guy CIA director William Casey card number five William Casey the architect of the Contra war was a shrewd dealer in securities who by 1971 had risen through the ranks of Wall Street lawyers to become the chairman 
of the Securities and Exchange Commission. Casey's money and connections helped propel Ronald Reagan, whose campaign he managed in 1980, to the White House, see card number 36. Made director of the Central, Central Intelligence Agency, Casey lost no time in implementing the Reagan Doctrine, the rollback of communism. In March 1981, President Ronald Reagan authorized $19 million for covert CIA activities against Nicaragua. For the next three years, Casey and his overseer of Central, Central American operations, uh, Duan, Duan Dewey uh, Calridge, ran the Contra War. Casey approved uh, Calridge's plans uh, to mine Nicaraguan harbors and to distribute an, assa distribute an assassination manual. The discovery of these covert actions led to the Boland Amendments by which Congress cut off military aid to the Contras. Casey evaded Congress's intent with Operation Elephant Herd, in which the Pentagon provided the CIA with 12 million dollars in surplus military equipment it was Casey who suggested to Oliver North C card number 13 that he turned to uh, Richard Secord and the enterprise for help in 1984 C card number 19 and 20 William Casey was stricken with a seizure the day before he was scheduled to testify before the Senate Intelligence Committee he died of a brain tumor several months later without having revealed any secrets. William Casey. William Casey. Look at that golem face. Card number six. Card number six. Casper Weinberger. Casper Weinberger. Card number six. Secretary, Secretary of Defense, Caspar Weinberger. Caspar Weinberger, a crony of Reagan's, Reagan's from the latter's tenure as governor of California, was formerly VP and director of Bechtel Corporation, a large defense contractor headed, headed at the time by George Schultz. When Weinberger succeeded Schultz as Nixon's budget director in 1972. His attacks on public spending earned him the nickname Cap the Knife. But as Reagan's Secretary of Defense from 1981 to 1987, his inflated defense budget request, which got through Congress in spite of outrageous overcharges, helped generate record deficits. Congress is currently investigating these and other so-called pentagon procurement scandals in february 1981 one weinberger told each branch of the military to maintain and continue to develop its own counter-terrorist capabilities the army responded by creating the special fort special operations division which in turn generated c c spray a black secret aviation unit providing clandestine air support for the cia other co covert army operations were delta yellow fruit task force 160 and intelligence support activity the army's mini cia the division spent 400 million dollars in its first three years despite his deep involvement in covert action Weinberger escaped most of the controversy surrounding the Iran-Contra scandal. At the her hearings, he was admired, admired for his opposition to the Iranian 
arms sales now retired captain knife has become captain knight having had that honor bestowed on him by the queen of england that's why he's in a horse in a knight's outfit knighted by the queen knighted by the queen <clears throat> card number seven OSS and CIA John single singlab singlob John singlob OSS CIA what is that uh, W W A C L I wonder what that stands for John Singh lab Ooh. let's get a good look at him come on John Singh lab look at the big ears he must have had huge ears. Right. Let's see who this guy is. Retired Army Major General John Singlob. Retired U.S. Uh, Major General John Kirk Singlob was a key player in the privatization of the Contra War. Though his uh, chairmanship of the World Anti Communist League, WACL, that's what it is, World Anti Communist League on a shirt, uh, and its US chapter, the US Council for World Freedom, USCWF. He enlisted paramilitary groups, foreign governments, and American conservatives in the Contra cause. WACL fundraising events featuring speakers such as Adolfo Calero, C Card 4, helped to provide the Contras with weapons, money, and training. The WACL organization's membership included Latin American dictators, death squad leaders, and neo fascists. John Singelob's lifelong military specialty has been unconventional warfare which he defines as low intensity operation such as sabotage sabotage terrorism assassination and guerrilla warfare and non-military activities such as psychological warfare economic sabotage and disinformation his activities as head of the studies and observations group c s o g in vietnam from 1966 to 1968 serves as a model for his Central American operations. SOG was a counter-terrorist unit which me with members chosen from all branches of the mil military, which ran missions into North Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia. Single Lob's involvement in Central America politics began in 1980 when he supplied the brutal Guatemalan and Salvadoran armed forces with counter-terrorist training using Argentine advisors as well as former special operations colleagues Wow what a nice guy this this piece of crap was look at this guy Wow John Singlob. Wow, wow, wow. <clears throat> Card number eight. Kill them all. Let God sort them out. Look at this delightful dude. 
Thomas Posey. Thomas Posey. Who's this guy? What a nice looking guy. Kill them all. Let God sort them out. Lovely, lovely. Card number eight, mercenary soldier, Thomas Posey. In July of 1983, Alabama grocer Thomas V. Posey, an ex-Marine, founded the Civilian Military Assistance, CMA project. In December, Posey and had organized a group of retired military personnel and Alabama National Guardsmen for the purpose of sending paramilitary teams to train, equip, and participate in military field operations against the Nicaraguan Sandinistas. The CMA received surplus military equipment from the 20th Special Forces Unit of the U.S. Army in Alabama, a group whose participation in CIA covert actions goes back to the Bay of Pigs invasion of Cuba in 1961. The CMA also received use of surplus aircraft which were used to transport equipment and to stage terrorist raids against Nicaragua. Nicaragua. By May of 1984, Posey had sent three training teams into Honduras. When two CMA recruits were shot down during a raid on a military school in northern Nicaragua, it became clear to the media that the training teams were actually mercenary commando units. Posey also provided sec uh, security services for John Singlob's World Anti-Communist League and U.S. Council for World Freedom, see card 7. Through Singlob, he came to know Oliver North and at North request, he sent his troops to the Contras, Contra Southern Front, headquartered at John Hall's Costa Rica Ranch, see card number 12. Because it is illegal to send mercenaries into other nations, Posey is currently under indict, indictment, indictment, indictment for violation of the Security Act. I wonder what happened to this guy. Look at this lovely dude. And what was he? He was a grocer? Posey and July Mercer. Alabama grocer. Alabama grocer. Hell, our God in our Twitch sat, chat saying he's a ghost. There's no data found on him. He hasn't found yet. Card number nine. Look at this guy. The LA Penka Bomber. The La Penka Bomber. A serial killer. The Lapinka Bomber. Hypnotic image, actually. Identity unknown. What is this? Let's get this thing focusing. Card number nine. Identity unknown. The Lapinka bomber. On May 30th, 1984, a man posing as a Danish photojournalist and using the name Per Anker Hansen accompanied a group of journalists to a press conference 
being held by Contra leader Eden Pastora in a tiny rebel enclave in Nicaragua called La Penca Pastora, also known, known as Commandante Zero from his days as a Sandinista's war hero, had called the press conference to denounce the CIA's plan to join his rebel forces. ARDE, the Democratic Revolutionary Alliance, and those of the FDN, 46 of whose 46 of whose 48 leaders were uh, Samon, Samon Sistas Hansen, also known as Amak Galil, planted his camera case near where Pastora was standing, rigged by, ringed by journalists. Remarking that his camera was malfunctioning, he then left the building. Moments later, an explosion ripped through the wooden shed, killing eight and seriously wounding many others. The Reagan administration suggested that the assassination was a Basque terrorist hired by the Sandinistas. Pastora didn't think so. He blamed the attack on the CIA and the U.S. National Security Council. There is evidence that Galil was hired by John Call's Cuban uh, assistants, Reno Corva and Felipe Vidal, C card number 10, Jack Terrer, a member of Thomas Posey's CMA mercenary group, C card 8, quoted Korova as saying that Galil was a Mossad Israeli intelligence agent. He also quoted Vidal as stating, quote, we put a bomb under him, Pastora, Pastora, but it didn't work because of bad timing, end quote. The real name, nationality, and current whereabouts of Hassan Galil are unknown. Card number nine. Mossad. I wonder if it's the uh, same type of operation as the dancing Israelis, right? Same type of look, maybe. Also, this this little part here. I'll just give you a little tidbit about Afghanistan. Afghanistan was uh, when the U.S. Uh, in 1990s and uh, early 2000s was was basically ruled by. A war chiefs and stuff like this and this same type of assassination took place with one of the war chiefs that was against the Taliban and all indications are that the CIA also assassinated that person CIA Mossad also assassinated that person in the same manner by hiding a bomb in a camera of a journalist okay and I think it was the Northern Alliance person or something I I used to know this 20 years ago but I forgot the name and gang I know I said we'll read nine but let's continue reading reading all 12 cards for this live stream card number 10 card number 10 Reno Corva and Felipe Vidal Ocean Hunter Reno Corva and Felipe Vidal CIA assets CIA assets card number 10 Reno Corva and Felipe Vidal Reno Corva and Fil Felipe Vidal are members of Brigade 2506 veterans of an earlier cia created contra army the 1961 bay of pigs invasion force as cia man john hall's uh lieutenants c card number 12 they oversaw the recruitment of uclas a cia acronym for unilaterally controlled latino assets for the southern front thus providing a link between Miami Cuban exiles and the Contras. 
they had other duties as well according to dissident contra leader Eden Pastora Korova and Vidal robbed uh, robbed our helicopter and promoted promoted desertion desertions among uh, among our uh, comrades in order to destroy us militarily because we didn't want to be CIA soldiers they have been implicated in the La Pinca bombing see card number nine when Joe Fernandez CIA chief of station in Costa Rica admitted in secret testimony before the Iran Contra commitment that some of uh, some of our people had a problem with drugs but we had to protect them he was referring to Cor Cor Corva and Vidal Corva known as the poison dwarf is a business partner of Medellin cartel association uh, associates Francisco Paco chains and the Gaberto Nuez C card number 11 Vidal codenamed Morgan is a hitman who has been assist, uh, arrested seven times on gun and drug trafficking charges most recently in 1986 Corvo and Vidal oversaw the deliveries and shipments of Medellin cartel cocaine on John Hall's ranch using weapons deliveries as a cover the company which fronted for the drug and gun smuggling operations was called Ocean Hunter and was owned by Paco Chains Wow Wow, Gary Webb, know that name. That's the kitty cats running and chasing each other. Gary Webb. Card number 11, look at this, look at this. What an image, what an beautiful piece of art man this would be amazing blown up and put on the wall the Medellin cartel Uncle Sam snorting it up wow. Gary Webb Gary Webb look into Gary Webb the Dark Alliance if you don't know what that is look it up the Medellin cartel Card number 11 Pablo Escobar and John Ocha Ochoa the Medellin cartel Colombians Pablo Escobar and George Orcha are the leaders of the Medellin cartel which is responsible for 80% of the cocaine entering the US Escobar the US Escobar known as Godfather is a former car chief car thief and gun for hire who started his own organization in 1977 and is now believed to be the world's richest criminal he provides security a 2,000 man police force for the cartel Orcha middle son of the notorious Orcha clan once bragged of personally smuggling 4,000 pounds of cocaine a week the tremendous profits generated from the sale of cocaine in excess of three million dollars a day enabled the cartel to buy influence and protection panama's general manuel noriega Pan panama's general manuel oriega to take but one example received as much as 10 million dollars a month for allowing the cartel to use panama's airports and launder its profits through panama's banking system noriega also received two hundred thousand dollars a year from the cia the madeline cartel and the cia had a relationship of convenience the cia offered air airstrips radar clearance and no customs inspections the cartel provided pilots airplanes and money according to the uh, ramon Mil million 
according to a Ramon Millian Rodriguez, a convicted Medellin accountant, the cartel gave $10 million to the Contras at the request of CIA, CIA agent Felix Rodriguez as a goodwill gesture. See card number 30. Ocean Hunter, the cartel uh, front which dealt with John Hall, C card number 12, through Rene Corova and Felipe Vidal, C card number 10, provided $200,000 a month, some of which went to Contras on the southern border. Snort it up, snort it up. Gary Webb, the Dark Alliance. Card number 12. Card number 12. John Hall. John Hall. Okay. John Hall. CIA contact. Indiana farmer John Hall's 1,800-acre Costa Rican ranch near the Nicaraguan border was to be the launching pad for the CIA-controlled Contra Southern Front. Hall, an old CIA hand, coordinated the efforts of Brigade 2506 members, C. Card 10, and Thomas Posse's soldiers of fortune, C. Card number 8 to help the Costa Rican-based Contras. The operation was financed by free frees paid by the Medellin, cartel, Medellin Cocaine Cartel for the use of his airship, sea cart number 11, plus $10,000 a month from the National Security Council. But John Hall had a problem. Eden Pastora, leader of ARDE, largest of the southern contra groups refused to subordinate himself to the cia supported fdn contra contra organization and would not work with rene corva and felipe vidal whom he considered to be terrorists to hall pastora was still a santanista hall's idea about what to do with opponents of the Reagan administration's Central American policies was most colorfully expressed when he told a reporter that people like Senator Edward Kennedy and John Kerry would, quote, be lined up against the wall and shot tomorrow at sunrise, end quote. Hall met with Amak Galil 22 uh, days before the attempted assassination of Eaton Pastora at La Pin Pinca, C card number nine. On his ranch, John Hall gave the orders, but he didn't call the shots. He carried out the plans of CIA Costa Rican, Costa Rican Station's chief, Joe Fernandez, and Oliver North of the National Security Council. See card number 13. John Hall. I remember this guy from that period. He actually made the news. He actually made the news, his planes in the 1980s. Okay. And this was card number 12. So that's 12 cards we just read from this set. There's 36 cards total. Okay. So we're going to do two more live streams where we're going to read 12 cards per live stream again. And the next live stream, we're going to start off with card number 13. Oliver North. Oliver North looking forward to it looking forward to it and this is the Iran Contra scandal cards uh, trading cards by Eclipse Comics okay that came out in 1988 
and I have another set of these and I'm gonna see if it has the insert in it as well so at the beginning of next live stream we'll uh, we'll read the insert as well because it does contain a certain amount of information that uh, we've read from the other cards uh, which might be worthwhile to read okay gang i hope you enjoyed that reading uh, i'm gonna go back to the live stream and catch up with the chat um, and see where we're at super fun super fun